Would the Unionville High School Chorale, our senior ensemble, and our conductor, Mr. Jason Throne, please come forward. At this time, we ask everyone to please rise for the singing of our national anthem, followed by the Unionville High School alma mater.
Good morning. My name is Jimmy Conley, and I have the great honor of being the principal at Unionville High School. I would like to warmly welcome the members of the school board, the Unionville Chads Ford School District Administrators, our assistant to this uh, superintendent, Mr. John Nolan, our superintendent, Dr. John Sandville, our director of curriculum, Mr. Tim Hoffman, the members of the Unionville, Unionville High School staff, parents, family members, friends, everyone out there watching today's live stream on YouTube, and most importantly, today's guests of honor, the members of the class of 2017. Thank you all for coming to the 94th commencement ceremony of Unionville High School. It is my privilege to offer greetings to everyone gathered here today to honor our graduating seniors. Members of the class of 2017, now that you are just minutes away from a momentous occasion in your young lives, I need to divulge something very personal to you. We have shared countless memories together over the last four years. I was your assistant principal and your principal. We've gone on link trips together. We experienced numerous sporting events, concerts, dances, lip dubs. This year we started a new tradition called the Senior Stroll. And I, I, I've had thoughtful conversations in the Cyber Cafe with many of you. And especially this year with a select view over some undercooked waffles. But now, I need to impart some wisdom to you that is so riveting that you will cherish this moment for the rest of your life. You may even create a Twitter hashtag for it. Okay, are you ready? Here it goes. I'm a little nervous. Raising a teenager is really difficult. Parents, please applaud if you agree. Oh boy, I actually got a few standing ovations there, but that's okay, thank you. While this statement may seem odd, since I've worked with teenagers for over 20 years in high schools, I've never actually had one living in my home until now. So this is all new to me. As many of you know or have seen, I am not alone in my journey as your principal. I have a few co-pilots at home, my three sons and my awesome wife, Michelle. By the way, since today is June 7th, I'm going to score big points today because today is my 14th wedding anniversary, so thank you, Michelle. <laughs> While I often share many stories about my three boys, today's tale is about my oldest son, Jimmy. We all call him Junior. He's a 13-year-old seventh grader and has only recently entered the teenage zone two months ago. In that time, as his dad, I've been very perplexed and reflective. Last month at dinner, my wife shared a story about something that had happened that day while my son was at school. It was about one of my son's friends who the other boys ridiculed and laughed at over something that should have been celebrated. My wife was so bothered by the story that she created a family motto for us this summer, kind of like the Conley family's summer elf on the shelf. The motto for the Conley home this summer is be that guy. I'm not sure how this applies to my wife who's the only female in our house of four guys, but I guess we'll give her a pass for the summer. So being that guy in my home means striving to become the idealized person who we all want to be, the version of us that is our best self. While Junior was out practicing basketball that afternoon, my wife placed a construction paper sign in his room, which still hangs above his desk today. It says in big, bold letters, be that guy. And then around it, she wrote him a series of statements in bold marker. Be that guy who sits with a kid in the cafeteria who was sitting alone. Be that guy who works hard every day. Be that guy who says thank you to all of his teachers. Be that guy who high fives all of his teammates after every play, even if they miss the shot or drop the pass. Be that guy who tells people they're doing a great job. Be that guy who loves mom's cooking and gives her hugs every day. Okay, admittedly, that one is a bit self-serving on my wife's behalf. But remember, she is the only female in a home of four guys. So members of the class of 2017, my wife's words of wisdom may seem pretty obvious advice to a middle school kid. But can you do these things next year and beyond? Are you willing to be that person who we can all count on? Are you willing to be that person who is kind just because kindness is the right thing? Are you willing to be that person who is accountable even though it's not the cool thing to do? Are you willing to be that person who stops others from posting mean spirit, unkind words on social media because it may be funny to some but could hurt someone else? Are you willing to be that person who will call out others who may be bullying someone? So class of 2017, I challenge you as my wife has done to my 13-year-old son and to the rest of my home, to be that person. It takes courage to be that person. Whatever platitudes you may hear over the next few months, no matter how old that you are, please know that it's really hard to stand up and be that person. 
but also know that we have your back. So does each person sitting to your right and to your left, your classmates. So do the people in the outer rows, your now former teachers. Most importantly, so does every person sitting in the stands, your parents, your siblings, and all your family members. If you face challenges being that person, send me an email. Let one of your former teachers know how you're doing. Reach out to us. Remember, even though you will walk across this stage in the next hour, you will always be part of our Unionville High School family. You will always be part of our lives and we'll always be there to help you. Members of the class of 2017, be that person. Live a life that is filled with compassion, support, empathy, and most importantly, kindness. Don't turn a blind eye to injustice, discrimination, oppression. Don't ever be afraid to call out the cool kids who are making fun of someone. Quite frankly, they're really not that cool when they get older, trust me. After the glow of graduation parties and fun begins to fade, sit down and write your own list of how you will strive to be that person. What path will you take in order to become the best version of yourself? Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the purpose of life is not to be happy, it's to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Many years from now, you may be a successful doctor, a titan of industry, a masterful orator, or an effective educator. Coincidentally, my third grade son's teacher is a former student of mine who I taught a few years ago. Our society is counting on your bravery and courage to be the best version of yourself. Our society needs that person who is going to be someone who will boldly challenge others if an inequality needs to be addressed. Our society needs that person to speak for those who have no voice. Our society needs that person who will make others feel as though they can be the best version of themselves. Our society needs that person to make people feel safe. Our society needs that person to be the leaders of our future, the leaders of the children that cheered you on during the senior stroll last week, and the leaders who will guide my own boys as they grow into their own best selves. One day, you may have a teenager of your own, and you will realize the joys and challenges of raising a teenager. Then you will call your parents, you'll thank them for all that they have done for you, some of you may even apologize, and ask for their help. You may also ask for some babysitting help as well. Good luck, class of 2017. Strive to be that person that is the best version of yourself. Rest assured, when you were struggling over midterms, final examinations, labs, term papers, and seminar presentations over the next few years, my middle child, Joey, will enter into his own teen years. And I'll be wringing my hands and second-guessing myself yet again. Maybe by then I'll have it figured out a little bit more, and maybe I'll create my own summer family theme. Either way, by that time, you will be well on your way to becoming your idealized person, and I'll be emailing you for help. Maybe even some babysitting help, too. Congratulations, class of 2017. We will miss you, and we know that whatever path you choose, that you will make our world the best version that it can be. Thank you. So commencement ceremonies are filled with numerous traditions, pomp, ceremony, and sometimes near power outages. At last year's commencement, there was a brief power outage. And in an effort to keep everyone engaged, Dr. Sandville and I took a selfie with the class of 2016. So now, it is my pleasure to introduce our superintendent, Dr. John Sandville, to speak to us today, as well as to invite him to take our second annual commencement selfie with the class of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sandville. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conley. Welcome, family, friends, and most, most importantly, the class of 2017. Congratulations. You are at the end of a 12-year journey, and you're, you're just about done. You're just about grown up. Uh, the little kindergartners, so eager to go to school, are now young adults just as eager to leave it. It is a time for revelry and remembering, parties and plans, old friends and new opportunities. Know that you have earned the celebrations and I urge you to enjoy them responsibly. After all, there is so much to look forward to. Graduations in places like this, the University of Delaware in this field house filled with your friends and families, several thousand strong, exemplify the magnitude of what you have done. 
If we were to add up the hours you spent in classrooms, on homework, playing sports, making music, pursuing your interests, on bus rides, and doing any number of other things that contributed directly to this moment, it would be a very large number. However, I am certain if I were to ask you to tell me what you like best, you would tell me about the moments, the conversations, the observations, revelations, discoveries, all the little things that made your time in Unionville Chad's Ford so special. There would be hundreds, maybe thousands of stories that would connect you to you sitting here right now. And I would not be surprised that it would be about the stories and not about the hours that you spent on buses, doing homework in classes, preparing for exams. That wouldn't surprise me at all, at all, because it is the little things, it is the stories that add up to make big things for all of us. When looking forward, like we are all doing right now for you, you're doing it individually, we are doing it collectively. As you look forward right now, you see big things like success and happiness. You see yourselves at universities, in the military, working in the world. All of it seems larger than life. You are on the edge and everything coming your way is bigger and better. Most of that is true. You will go places and see things that are new and exciting. However, when you are in new classrooms or in new cities or doing new things, life will calm down. New routines will begin and the little things will start to add up. The new friends and colleagues, the new ideas and information, the new challenges, the accomplishments will all take their place in your consciousness. Almost immediately, you will have a new collection of stories that capture moments, the conversations, the events, the discoveries, the ideas that, draw, that you will draw on. And herein lies the lesson. Pay attention to the people. Pay attention to the occasions, the happenings, for they collectively create the pathway forward. They are your stories. So how do you do this? You're not gonna get out of here without a little bit of advice from me here, my last chance to say something to the class of 2017. So I advise you, I offer this for you to take or leave. Take care in how you interact with others. Be sincere and be polite. Your parents were right. In fact, thank them right now. Your parents who are here, your family here, they were right. I'm serious, go ahead, thank them, please. Oh, come on, class of 2017, we can do better. Thank your parents. Jeez, all oh, Pete, come on now. <laughs> there we go. Thank your parents because they were right, I promise you. Take care in what you choose to believe in. Believe in truth and ask questions. Your teachers were right. Take care in who you let into your heart. Take care into who you let into your mind and seek those whose values and vision match yours. Your friends may or may not have been right. Take care of yourselves. The way you move through life influences the quality of your experiences and that will determine the kinds of stories your life is made of. I'd like to to share with you the words of Dr. Nito Quibane, president of High Point University. One of the greatest resources people cannot mobilize themselves is that they try to accomplish great things. Most worthwhile achievements are the result of many little things done in a single direction. We will remember you and all of the wonderfully unique things you did. Let me add one more. The class of 2017 will forever be the last senior class that Joe the intrepid weather dog closed school for. I am certain he is barking from wherever he is for all of you. There is a story in there about a funny little dog and how he became so special and so important to many of you, especially late at night or early in the morning 
when a storm was impending. So with that, I say farewell, class of 2017. I wish you health, happiness, and endless opportunities to pursue your dreams. You have everything you need to go forth and set the world on fire. We look forward to hearing the stories of your success. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandville. We now have the pleasure of hearing from two of our talented students today. It is my privilege to introduce our first speaker from the class of 2017, Ms. Dina Sparopoulos. Families, friends, faculty, and of course, the class of 2017, good morning. Before we get into the, well, we made it, or the day has finally come, I would like to start today by reciting a poem from my Greek preschool graduation. Allow me to set the scene. A small, decorated bridge, emotional parents, and 25 giggling preschoolers wearing little caps made out of styrofoam bowls and paper reciting the words, I cross the bridge to graduate. I'm growing up, you see. I'll always try to do my best to make you proud of me. Such a simple, delicate, and adorable little poem, right? Well, before the tears start flowing from the sentimental piece of writing, I want you to notice something. The poem reads, to make you proud of me. Not me proud of me, but you. We have grown up in a society where we have been expected to please other people. Impress your friends, make your parents proud, you name it. Very rarely have we had the opportunity to make things happen for just ourselves. Yet, on this very special day, it is evident that we have chosen one thing for ourselves to be incredible. Cliché, I know. But we, the class of 2017, have chosen the path for greatness. We have decided to take the resources provided to us and use them to better ourselves through our education, through our extracurriculars, and through the friendships and relationships we have created from our time at Unionville. It is clear to me that the reason that each and every one of you is sitting here today is because you have accepted the challenge of working hard to reach the ultimate goal, graduation. Unionville High School has an exceptionally rigorous curriculum, a plethora of activities, and a blooming social scene. And though we have all had our own individual journeys through these atmospheres, we must consider that we have all suffered similar trials and tribulations through the past four years. For some, there have been some very vexing times socially. Finding your place in high school can be a difficult task. For others, extracurriculars have proved to be challenging, like making a team or struggling through hours upon hours of physical activity. There have been some extremely trying times academically as well. Final exams, thesis papers, and group presentations are just a few of the many intense assignments we have been expected to complete. Yet, even after we have been faced with what seems like an impossible number of assignments for one night's work or a never-ending set of sprints, we have persevered. In one way or another, every single one of you has chosen to study for that test, has chosen to complete that race, has chosen to accept the path to greatness. You have allowed this work, which at times may seem trivial, to better you as a scholar, as an athlete, as an artist, and as a person. This is a trait that is crucial to take with you after you walk across the stage today. Trades, military, world travel, college, whatever you choose to pursue after this ceremony, I urge you to consider this. Always continue to choose greatness for yourselves. While you may accomplish something and make other people proud, you must primarily do it for yourself, to make you proud, 
and to deepen your passion for whatever it is you do. We must strive for greatness to illuminate the thinkers within us, the good citizens within us, and the doers within us. When you are dozing off in the library as you are pulling all-nighters to study for your exam, or when you are barely making it through your basic training through the day, um, remember that you have overcome obstacles in the past to continue your path to greatness once before, so do not be afraid to do it again. Allow yourself to accept, to learn, and to persevere. Now, let us recognize the magnitude of the ceremony which we are attending today. Each one of you sitting here is a success. In one form or another, you have found a special interest at Unionville that has taken you to this moment. A milestone in all of our lives. Graduation is the time for us to all come together and to celebrate each other's accomplishments and to also celebrate yourself. So, as we cross this bridge to graduate in real caps and gowns, not the handmade ones from all those years ago leaving preschool, be sure to always do your best to make you proud of you. Good luck and congratulations, class of 2017. Good morning, family, faculty, staff, friends, and the class of 2017. My name is Jess Homitz, and I am honored and grateful to be able to speak before you today and to share my hope for the future and a little bit of myself in a poem. Congratulations, class of 2017. This is our day. This is the day we move on. The experiences we've lived through have shaped our world. They've given us the earth beneath our feet, and at its core is our comfort zone. It's easy to succumb to the gravitational pull of familiarity. We refuse to leave the safety of our solid ground, where we study and test, but I digress that this is not enough to create ingenuity. Everyone learns that life isn't fair but some people realize that they can remake the brown and dusty crust of their worlds. We discover a small trickle of water that turns into coursing rivers, that slake the thirst of curiosity, and that erode the hardened earth so that new interests pool into oceans, just waiting for our imaginations to discover their depths. But fear can put an end to this escapade because the oceans are daunting. So we draw lines in the sand to, put, to keep the danger out, to keep people out, and to keep ourselves in. And yet, as we age and our ideas fester, forests with trees as tall as the sky form, from our feelings and opinions that are growing and maturing and accumulating from the roots that teachers and parents have helped take shape. But the judgment of others, can halt these magnificent forests from spreading and providing necessary oxygen so that we can continue to develop. But the caves, oh the caves, how deep and dark they are, full of mystery and uncertainty. But how will we discover hidden solutions and innovations if we don't scour every inch of these caverns? Our worlds expand to encompass all of these, and co our comfort zones keep us grounded and reassured. But the mountains, they strain the gravity that keeps us secure as we climb, falter, and slip until we conquer them. And some things in our lives just suddenly click, and we gain the confidence to face other challenges. As we climb higher and higher on these mountains of ours, we get closer and closer to those very distant stars. And it turns out they're not as far out of our reach as we believe they are. 
but space is enormous, silent, and cold. It's enough to convince so many people not to be bold and try to touch those gas giants. There are planets waiting to be discovered with endless possibilities that we just need to lift off and see. Building telescopes to observe and plan and choose the risks worth taking and the dreams worth making. Using our education to create rockets to forge our own past through the blinding triumphs of generations past, we prepare for potential failures. Because even falling stars are beautiful. There are nebulas forming and solar systems growing. The universe is expanding, waiting for us to get going, to innovate, and to inspire. Those black holes that only leak darkness and ice must be filled with our love for life and not our ability to create grievous strife. So traverse the asteroid fields, ride on the tails of comets, and soar and sail on the solar winds. Go shake the universe and its old atoms. Because after all is said and done, we too are made of these ancient elements, but packaged in marrow, sinew, and beating hearts. Utilize the ideas in your brain and the stardust in your veins. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Each year, our graduating seniors select a teacher who is honored at commencement as the educator of the year. The class cho chooses a teacher whom they both like and respect. This year's educator of the year is Mr. Andy DePell, a gifted teacher in our English department who our students deeply admire and respect. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present the 2016-17 educator of the year, my friend and colleague, Mr. Andy DePell. Good luck, brother. Thanks, man. Oh, boy. I have a speech. Um, hi. A few years ago, my friend and colleague, Mr. Stafford, stood on this very stage and delivered a wise, heartfelt speech. Or at least, I assume it was wise and heartfelt. I never really paid attention past the fifth sentence in. Uh, graduations, he declared are not about speakers, they're about you all, the graduates. And I couldn't disagree more. Sure, this year's class has inspiring artists, mellifluous mu musicians, outstanding athletes, award-winning academics, and wonderful writers, alliteration. It's an intimidating program, but I'm not about to let that deter me. As someone who came so close to beating Mr. Ahart in trash ball one time, and answered two questions right one time on Mr. Burgess's Friday trivia challenge. I feel really confident to say that I'm a big deal and I deserve all the attention I can get. <laughs> still, still, I'll admit, there was a time when I wasn't always the, the impeccably dressed, so, so confident speaker that you see in front of you today. From 1990 to 1994, I could probably best be described as slightly anxious and socially awkward. I always seem to find myself on the periphery of social groups. And so the things I ended up learning those first three years in elementary school uh, were, <laughs> I didn't think you would laugh at that part, were um, swings are just as much fun by yourself as with someone else and Watching PBS with your parents is just as much fun as Dan Benner's birthday party would have been. And hiding in the classroom coat room and insisting someone take you home does not work. But, but, then I got to fourth grade. A new teacher that year, Miss Sees, seemed to make it her mission to make everyone a part of the in crowd. She gave us nicknames. She did newsletters just for our class. There was like this student of the week thing she would do. She even made appearances on the playground, and it worked for me. Not only did I actually start doing my classwork, but I actually started making friends. I got invited to Dan Benner's birthday party that year. 
I told you I'm a big deal. But, <laughs> this is the fun part, but even as I shed my outsider status, I knew that others weren't having an as easy a time as I was. Terry was new to our school, and from day one, he struggled to make friends. Kids labeled him excessively outgoing and too desperate to impress. Uh, he claimed to have an indoor pool, every X-Men card ever, and a dirt bike. When word got out that he didn't have any of these things and actually qu had quite a difficult home life, the kids distanced themselves even more. He became the kid who sat alone on the swings, and he became the kid who ate alone at lunch. He was the new me. So, recognizing these warning signs, did I intervene? Did I, oh, that's the answer, no. Did I tell Terry that he could sit with me at lunch, that we could play together on the playground, that maybe he should come over my house sometime? I'm embarrassed to admit I did not. I remained silent. Finding refuge and being part of the in crowd, I tacitly chose to be exclusive when I should have been inclusive. I had the power to welcome him in, and I chose to let him remain an outsider. But the only reason I can be here today and be reflective on this is that because there was someone who did what I should have done. No doubt seeing the same thing in Terry that I was noticing, Miss C's made it her personal mission to make Terry part of the in crowd. She made him feature student four times that year. She came out to the playground and organized a game so that he could play too. She brought him food so that he would have something to eat in the lunchroom with the rest of us. Her actions saved Terry from being a complete pariah. But they also showed me the responsibilities of social power. When you're part of the in crowd, you have an obligation to welcome in as many people as you can, especially those who are labeled as strange, as different, and as weird. And if I have to pull this speech away from myself for just a few seconds, I'd remind you all of that responsibility. We all know what it feels like to be an outsider, but we also know what it feels like to be an insider. I've already seen some of you find ways to be inclusive when you could have been inclusive or exclusive. You've laughed at a classmate's corny joke about cats when you could have just rolled your eyes. You've asked follow-up questions when a kid talks about making apple cider that weekend, when you could have just laughed under your breath. You've invited others to sit at your prom table when you could have been dismissive. You made thank you cards for a big test at the end of the year when you could have just want, worried about your own score. A lot of you have shown the social acceptance I should have shown all those years ago. And I hope that you continue this trend beyond high school. Unionville has a way of producing leaders. And no doubt you're gonna find yourself in a position of power very soon. Keep an eye out for the outsiders and do everything you can to include them. You'll both be better for it. Good luck and congrats, class of 2017. Dr. Sandville. All of the seniors seated before you have satisfactorily met or exceeded the state and school district academic requirements to receive their diplomas. It is with great pride and confidence in their future that I present to you the Unionville High School Class of 2017. David DeMarco. Sophie Wiltz. Hyunwoo Kim. Jenna Meyerson. Jessica Homitz. 
Constantina Spiropoulos. Mady Ali Khan. Mia Alfonsi. Delaney Crosley. Lauren Adams. Robert Akins. Taylor Alexander. Matthew Daniels. Kristen Andes. Daniel Aston. Harris Augusti. Hannah Bailey. Uma Balaji. Brendan Barrett. Ben Basilio. Megan Belgum. Evan Bennis. Megan Berry. Brianna Bialco. Matthew Biederman. Jillian Brislin. Daniel Brucker. Gwendolyn Buckley. Andrew Burek. Shane Burke. Colleen Cadden. Salem Carlo. Alexander Christina. Meredith Cherubelli. Brooklyn Shaney. Victoria Childs. Andrew Chaffo. Alexis Chinchuli. Joshua Ciccarelli. Amanda Collins. Matt Chocolis. Michael Cresta. Jack Conway. Lauren Corrigan. Nathan Cotlin. Michael John Cowart. Tyler Cox. Anna Crawford. Taylor Crittenden. Eva Crossman. David Crossan. Eric Cunningham. Kelly Catrona. Christopher D'Amico. Alexandra Darcy. Abigail Daly. Emery Dana. Tierra Danho. Matthew Dolphin. Isabella Devoku. William Debenham. Andrew Cruz. Matthew DiFilippo. Henry Delaney. Sophia Detweiler. Connor Deutsch. Carl Deal. Jeremy Doe. William Dobbins. Madison Dahl. Brent, Brendan Daughtry. Calden Driscoll. Colin Dunn. John Duttenhofer. Sierra Dicio. Elizabeth Edwards. Tucker Erser. Vikash Eswar. Michael Evans. Emily Farina. James Fournier. Andrew Gabay. Holly Farrow. 
James Fish. Caroline Fisher. Bryce Fitzgerald. Bridget Foote. Jordan Fortunato. Natalie Freeman. Madison French. Catherine Fry. Grace Gangle. Christopher Gerke. Armand Gavorgian. Andrew G. Antonio. Jesse Gill. Isaac Goad. Alexandra Grace. Ethan Graper. Andrew Greaves. Trevor Gardiner. Kyle Garvey. Melanie Hammond. Connor Greenstein. Micah Grillmeyer. Mara Grimes. Megan Haley. Garrick Hardy. Alexandra Harris. Catherine Hart. Lindsay Hastings. Michael Hearn. Karen Help. Alexander Hess. Rebecca Heyman. John Himes. Olivia Hojanaki. Benjamin Horeen. Brady Horn. Shelby Hunter. Tyler Glennon. Rachel Hughes. Sunday Hatu. Lauren Hughes. Jesse Hunt. Kieran Hunt. Dara Jin. Damian Hunt. Rachel Jones. Carolyn Joseph. Thomas Jung. Anna Yule. Alexander Callis. Dawson Cannonberg. Eva Karras. Michaela Carlesis. Caitlin Kiefer. Joshua Keen. Emily Keenan. Hannah Keglovitz. Caroline Kenton. Danyal Khan. Milan Kazana. Adam Kimmel. Rachel Kinane. Parker King. Caroline Kinsley. Annie Klingenberg. Paul Knaust. Elizabeth Kaler. Matthew Kolod. Virginia Carell. Isaac Lacombe. Skylar Lambert. Erica Lane. Spencer Larson. Sydney Lau. Kaylin Lay. Lauren Leeson. Cade Linkitis. Alejandro Leone. Daniel Luckenbach. Jenny Liang. 
Alana Lindner. Irene Liu. Jessica Liu. Kira Lunkins. Alexandra Lau. Aisha Lunkins. Olivia Lucas. Joseph Madrak. Michael McGuire. Sagar Maheshwari. Matthew Mainwaring. Madison Malloy. Paul Malone. Sophia Maloney. Michaela Manello. Jackson March. Samantha Mariani. Jillian Marley. Zebulon Martelli. Robert Maxwell. Kaylee McCarthy. Molly McCluskey. Beth McCormick. Nicholas McGlade. Justin McClellan. Bryce McManus. Grace McNeil. <laughs> David Mersner. Thomas Miles. Adeline Miller. Raina Miller. Scott Miller. Natalie Mills. Jacob Mims. Jennifer Moscato. Claire Matola. Michael Moscato. Zachary Nance. Brandon Messon. Mackenzie Myers. Frank Modesto. Lily Neff Peterson. Taylor Nichols. Jackson Nylon. Lance Nines. Amai Narula. Matthias Nitz. Gerard O'Rourke. John Odom. Richard Pekropis. Michael Papernick. Jeffrey Parsons. Tyler Parsons. Sienna Patel. Spencer Pellegrino. Lexi Petrillo. Nicholas Pelleggi. Zachary Pogue. Morgan Powell. Rashika Prati. Louis Ramuno. Parthna Ranganathan. Georgia Rassius. Kathleen Rhodes. William Richardson. Heather Rittler. Caitlin Rodriguez Gar. Spencer Ross. Slipon Samita Suri. Bradley Saunders. Hannah Scargill. Sophia Schenk. John Schnabel. Allison Sklar. Madison Shanahan. Christopher Shaw. Christopher Shearer. Andrew Short. Ryan Skip. Adam Slackway. Courtney Smith. George Ann Smith. Gwyneth Snavely. Blake Starnes. Bailey Suarez. Owen Swartz. 
Carson Shizmanski. Elizabeth Tamargo. Victoria Tappan. Matthew Tashoni. David Taylor. Jacob Taylor. Sarah Taylor. Fernanda Telles. Jordan Tabay. Leah Tedesco. Jillian Tabay. Evan Thames. Bradley Tolan. Brandon Thomas. Dylan Thompson. Elaine Tierney. Thea Tuchek. <laughs> Julia Trigg. Matthew Trosel. Damian Turf. Gabrielle Yurik. Lexi Euknes. Colin Underwood. Devin Vongnerath. Sydney Walter. Alexandra Ward. James Watson. Timothy Weber. Gabrielle White. Julia Wright. Carson Woolsey. Zachary Vandenbrack. Warren Wilson. Nicholas Yang. Paige Young. Karen Young. Abigail Zerby. Hillary Zhang. Jason Zhang. Betty Zhang. Yang Yu Zhu. So at this time, would the graduates please stand? It's not official yet. <laughs> I call to the podium Mr. David DeMarco, president of the class of 2017. <laughs> class of 2017, join me in turning our tassels from the right to the left. Here we go. One, <laughs> two, Three. Congratulations. So good luck finding your hat. You have to come with the same cap you arrived in. This is awkward now. So friends, as we conclude today's ceremony, I could share no fitter words than those of Dr. Maya Angelou, who once remarked about the importance of home. She said, the ache for home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. Remember class of 2017 that Unionville High School will always be your home. Visit us often. Send us an email from time to time. Please don't bother asking us for money. And know that our encouraging thoughts are always with you. Good luck on your journey of life. We will miss you. Congratulations. Now on to the next adventure to change the world.